Hi, welcome again to the Melling Law YouTube channel where we're continuing our series about managing other people's money. Specifically today we're talking about guardians and conservators. Uh, so the, the managing other people's money title, we're borrowing that from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. They have a whole book series about these types of topics and uh, specific books about specific situations. So, th so one of them is, is about uh, guardians and conservators. So these are court appointed positions uh, and, and it usually happens under one of three types of circumstances. Either A, um, a child, parents have passed away or had their uh, parental rights revoked and they need a court appointed guardian or conservator. Um, that court appointed guardian and conservator is someone who manages their day-to-day -day care uh, that's the guardian role, and then conservator is, is someone to manage that child's finances. The conservator um, really has, has a lot of uh, liability, uh, it, potential places where they could go wrong. For example, would it be wrong to, let's, let's say the, the conservator is a family member taking this child in, uh, that this person already has three children, so a household of five, they're bringing on a sixth. Now if they spend $5,000 a month on their living expenses between their rent, utilities, uh, food, um, and you know different types of expenses, would it be okay for them to just add another $1,000 a month from this child's fund to fund their living expenses in general? Uh, generally not. Uh, usually we're, we're looking at only, only those increased costs directly related to that child and we have to be very careful about how we account for that. Um, one of the other uh, situations where this comes up is if a child uh, reaches the age of majority but has some kind of chronic disability. At that point then the parents or another family member will generally obtain a guardianship or conservatorship over that child to manage, continue to manage their affairs uh, beyond the age of adulthood because of the incapacity of that child. Finally that third situation would be when a uh, when an older person tends to lose their ability to manage their own affairs. Uh, this is generally due to stroke, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, these kinds of um, conditions that would uh, Im impair someone's ability to, to care for themselves physically and financially. Uh, at that point, they might need a guardian or a conservator. Maybe it's one of their children. Maybe it's a spouse, a grandchild. But these conservators are open to a lot of uh, kind of ethical dilemmas. How How do you treat the the costs associated with with this person are you paying your, yourself for your own time generally not uh, so what is appropriate and what is not if this person has been giving money consistently to one of their children do you continue to make those gifts for them and this book by the consumer financial protection bureau uh, will help you with some of those decisions you can order that and we'll continue this series and 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 tackle some of those ethical dilemmas as well uh, so thanks for watching if you have any questions feel free to reach out to us or uh, click on the link to find out more about this book